The opinions expressed on The Simone Edwards Show by our guests are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of the station, its owners, and or The Simone Edwards Show and those affiliated with it. In no event will The Simone Edwards Show, this station, its owners, guests, hosts, or affiliates be liable for the information disseminated on the program, including, without limitation, any loss or damage, indirect or otherwise, arising from information presented on the show. We trust you are of legal age and will consult appropriate professionals prior to employing any opinion expressed on the show. Many of the topics discussed are personal in nature, and some people may disagree with the opinions expressed on the show. We are open to your constructive criticism and or ideas for future radio programs. Please feel free to email us at the Simone Edwards Show at gmail.com. Again, that's the Simone Edwards Show at gmail.com. Hey everyone, this is Simone of the Simone Edwards Show, and we are here live in studio with my special guest today, Miss Shantae Brown. She has just recently released her first project called He Lives. We're going to be talking about that in just a little bit. You are here for um, the third installment of our Girl Can We Talk series. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, Girl Can We Talk is really a way to empower women to kind of step out from behind whatever excuse you may have and just do it you're not too old you're not too young you're if it's a degree you need to get go and get it if it's a business you need to start go and start it just know that if God has put it on your heart you can do it and Shantae is going to share with us her experiences so without further ado Shantae we want to welcome you to the show Thank please you. say hello to our audience hi everybody all right so before we jump off into the deep end let's get to know you just a little bit <laughs> okay. um Start off with, what do you do for fun? Before we get into the work part of it, what do you do for fun? I um, love to travel with my husband. Yeah. Uh, that's fun. You know, he's a saxophonist and singer. So right, right, right. gospel, jazz, and R&B. So that's fun traveling with him when we can get away without the boys. And then we love, I love to be with my boys. Right. And, uh, we like to go to the movies and eat <laughs> <laughs> to the mall. Um, that's a that's about it, really. So what's your favorite place where you've been, where you've traveled? Mm, I don't have a favorite place where I've traveled yet. I want to okay. go to the Bahamas. I've never been to the Bahamas. I want to go to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. There's places that I want to travel. It was fun. I did a cruise in Mexico. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people have been to Mexico. Yeah. Uh, but there's some, like, the Bahamas and Hawaii and... People are probably sure people are like, oh, those places. Yes, those places. Right, never right. Been. <laughs> no, I want to go to Hawaii. And I want to go to Paris. One oh day, God, yeah. And I definitely yeah. want to go to Egypt. Okay. You know what? It's interesting. I've never really had a desire to go to Egypt. Well, I'm an Indiana Jones fan for. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and I love to uh, read about history. Right. And um, I like looking at things about the tombs and artifacts and things like that so i want to go to egypt see now you just kind of nudged me a little bit just <laughs> nudge I'm, yeah i just i don't know i've yeah i've kind of been on the other side of the mm -hmm. continental divide a little bit um so i want to ask you a question as a singer mm -hmm. you're probably more sensitive to sounds than the average bear yeah yeah yes, i have to say yes i am <laughs> um not a great singer as some people are but um one thing I can say is that God has given me the gift, if you want to say gift, mm -hmm. to hear the right sound right. Um, in worship. Oh, wow. Um, when I tell people, they're like, some people understand, some people don't. Right, 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 right. But there's certain notes that people can hit mm -hmm. on the keys or the organ, um, not to make you shout, but right. I mean to take you into another realm. Of right, worship. and that's one thing he's definitely given me. That is awesome. Um, sometimes it's scary because <laughs> you'll hear something and you'll be like, "Ooh, that's mm. kind of strange. Maybe strange fire." Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Strange fire sound. Um, but he's definitely given me that, and um, I don't take it lightly. That's beautiful. Yeah, I just went somewhere not too long ago, and when I walked in the building, I was like doesn't feel right it was like yeah. strange, strange. Yeah, yeah. the music was strange everything was strange and i'm sitting in my seat I'm like lord please let them play with your spirit 
you yeah. know, and just praying. And eventually they started coming out of it, but it was just strange. And yeah. I think people, you probably didn't ask me all this, but I think. No, 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 that's good, you know, though. As musicians and vocalists, you know, you got to be careful of the sounds. Right. You know, you're, you're trying to go somewhere in worship or in praise. You definitely have to be careful about the sounds. Yeah. that you uh, play and that you sing and just try to be attentive mm-hmm. uh, to the voice of the Lord. Right. Um, I'm so glad you brought that up because I remember as you were talking, I remember being in a service and it, I can't even think of what the song was, but it was a really popular song and it was kind of like a favorite song at the mm-hmm. moment. And it played right before the preacher got up okay. and the people were just like up and dancing and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Just all this mm-hmm. stuff and it's going on. And, it was weird because something shifted. Mm. And it was like, what just happened? <laughs> and you know, you kind of dismiss stuff like, okay, that's just me. Mm-hmm. But when the preacher got up to preach, he kind of stilled everything and he brought in the like sound. a worship song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he brought like, you brought in the sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like, once he brought in the sound, the atmosphere kind of changed and it went back to where it needed to be. And then the word came forward. Yeah, you know, I've been in services where they'll be at one place and then they'll go to a certain sound and it'll take them somewhere. Right. And there are sounds that could take you in deep worship, but the minute that musician or that vocalist steps into themselves right. or they miss the move, right. it can switch the atmosphere just like that. Wow. And you'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what happened? <laughs> we're, we're, we were right here. We were right in the rim. And all of a sudden, they'll switch or, or do something, and it can change the whole atmosphere. Yeah. So you definitely got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and Him leading you in the sounds, vocally and uh, instrumentally. I love it. I absolutely love it. And so I'm going to go down a little bit. Um, We're going to kind of be all over. (laughs) So based on what you just said, I'm going to go with the direction that God is leading us in. Based on the things that you just said about being mindful and being aware of the sound that we present, the Mm -hmm. sound that we put forward, um, what is the responsibility of a worship leader? Hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of different answers for that. Um, Yeah. But for me, uh, somebody told me one time I got up to worship and I feel like your responsibility is to get the people to acknowledge God and to recognize who he is. And the whole reason why we worship is to give him glory. Right. And you definitely are trying to touch the heart of God. Right. So what would you do if you're trying to touch somebody's heart? Mm, That's good, Shante. You know, and... Somebody told me one time because I got up to worship and I just went to my own place. Even though I was in front of the people, I just went into my own place, in my closet, as you would say. And when I was done, a woman came up to me and she was crying. She was like, I just want to say thank you for welcoming welcoming me into your closet of worship. Wow. And I just looked at her and I thought about that. I was like, my closet of worship. And then when I thought about when I was up there, my mind and my heart was directly mm-hmm. on God, and I just wanted to please him. I just wanted to touch his heart. So when she said that, I was like, wow. She was grateful for being in my closet of worship. Right. And I think as worship leaders and we're you know, leading a congregation or the gathering, wherever you may be, it's our responsibility to make sure the people are trying to reach the heart of God. That's really good. Worship. So then what does a worship leader need to do to prepare themselves to stand before God's people in worship? You know, sanctify yourself, um, consecrate yourself. Um, There's some places you can't go, there's some things you can't do, you Mm -hmm. know, and the Holy Spirit will lead you. And I believe true worshipers, worship is always in their heart. Right. I don't care if they go and see, you know, the R&B singer, worship is always there, you right. know. And uh, for me, I'm always listening to worship. Now, don't get me wrong. I love R&B music. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I love, you know, listening to Fantasia, which is, by the way, she's definitely anointed. Yeah. Um, I love, you know, listening to certain R&B singers, mm-hmm. but I only can listen to so much. Right. Because my heart is like, uh, you need to 
go back and get yourself together, worship and get your mind on God and get your heart on God. And right. I believe you have to just keep your mind on God and consecrate, even with your eating, even just your life. Yeah. Your entire life, you know, needs to be consecrated to God and prepare yourself for you could worship at any moment. It's not just in church. It's That's not good. just, oh, we want you to come and sing for us. I mean, there's people that I've met just throughout the day. I could be at the grocery store and going to worship, just singing down the aisle way, and somebody be like, oh, thank you. I was thinking about God today, and that just touched me. You know, it's just right. always, just always trying to touch the heart of God. I love that. I absolutely love that. That is that is definitely not only is it um a beautiful concept, I think that it's a it's a very um it's a good challenge, a good bar to set for ourselves in whatever area, but especially as a worship leader, I think that's excellent. Um what does it mean? So kind of demystify this for us a little bit. What does it mean to lead the people of God into the presence of God? What does that mean? Hmm. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know so many answers to that. Uh, just trying to, oh, what does it mean? Make sure I say the right thing. Yeah. Um, let me ask you. Okay. What does it mean for you to worship? It, for me to worship, it's a shift of focus. Mm. And to me, worship is about changing the focus from me and my environment to the one that my heart loves, the one that my soul loves. Mm -hmm. um, worship for me is about intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's about connecting with the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And so... It's, it's not necessarily hallelujahs will come, God you're worthy will come, all those things will come, but it's, um, it's a garden experience. Hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's being naked and unashamed. Naked mm. in the sense of there's no pretense, there's no hiding, there's no form or fashion. It's just God, this is me. This is me and my brokenness. This is me and my weakness. This is me, but this is me coming to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It makes me think of, I'm going to use a corny line, okay. but it makes me think of the line from Notting Hill. But, uh -huh. you know, like, Lord, this, where she says, I'm just a girl standing before a boy, mm -hmm. um, asking him to love her, that kind of thing. Whereas with worship, I see it as like, I'm just the creature standing before the creation creator mm -hmm. in all of my brokenness, giving you the best of giving you the best of me, even though it's not my best. And that's what it means. Yeah. You know, you're basically naked before God. Yeah. Now, when you get up before people. Yeah. Think about all those people. Right. That have come from different situations. Mm -hmm. And they came into this gathering today and mm -hmm. they had all this stuff on their mind. Mm -hmm. And as a worship leader, you have to think about, okay, I have all these people that have all these situations. Mm -hmm. And it's like, God, what do you want me to say? I How love that. do you want me to lead your people today? And that's what it means getting them to get their heart focused on him. Right. I love that, and I like and I like the fact that it's starting out with the. It's not, hey, I'm coming in, and here's where we're gonna go, mm -hmm. but it's coming in with the mentality of, okay, God, where where do you want the people to go? Because He knows, you know, He knows the ones that are coming from the east, west, north, yes. and south, right? Yes, yes. And so He knows the direction everyone's coming, and we're all coming in with a collective purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then it goes right back to what you were saying about the importance of consecration. And sanctification. Yes, yes, because you have to be able to hear. Yeah. You have to be able to hear. You can't go on your own agenda. Your agenda may not meet somebody's need out there today. That's so good. That is that is absolutely beautiful. Okay. Um, so then once we get them there, mm -hmm. what is the purpose of leading the people into the presence of God? From a worship leader standpoint, what is the purpose of getting them to God? Well, once they're there, they're there. Yeah. All you can do is just continue to worship and keep them there. 
keep them in the realm of God and the realm of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If the Holy Spirit is reigning in that place or wherever they are, it's your job to just keep them there, right. to keep the spirit of the Lord flowing in the place right. and not to leave. That's right. why it's so important that your musician and the vocalists that are with you are consecrated as well That's and good. that they're hearing the sound because you don't want to, once the people are in that realm, you want them to go even deeper. You don't want them to come out. Right. You want them to stay and go where God wants them to go. You want the presence of the Lord to stay with you. You don't want him to dismiss himself. Oh, that is powerful. Yeah. That That's a powerful statement that you don't want God to say, mm, I'm, yeah. I'm going mm, to mm. go ahead and exit the building. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right, you guys, we are going to take a break for station identification. We will be back with recording artist Shante Brown. Um, we're going to be talking about her latest project, He Lives, in just a moment. Be right back. Bye. You are listening to the San Diego Station of Inspiration. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, KTAV Radio. For more information on how you can advertise your business, event, or services, please visit us online at ktav.tv or call 619-246-6131. All right, we are back here in studio with Shantae Brown, recording artist of He Lives. And she just, God just used her to take us right on into the deep Thank end. You. So um, there's some really good nuggets that you dropped on us earlier about <laughs> worship. I really love that. Thank and you. about the sound, being mindful of the sound. So before we segue, just close out that section and tell us, in your opinion, mm -hmm. What is the difference between a worship leader and a singer? And I'm not talking in a secular context because that's obvious. Mm -hmm. But within the context of, because within the church we can have worship leaders mm -hmm. and we can have singers. And so talk to us about the difference. Um, I would just say a worshiper and a singer. Okay. You know, I, I believe everybody is a worship leader in their own right. Um, I never say worship leader for myself. I always just say worshiper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you have people that can sing. Right. And I mean, they can sing the house down. Right. But then you have people that, as we talked about earlier, that will touch the throne. Right. Touch the heart of God. Right. Those are worshipers. Wow. Where they don't care about a riff, a run. Right, uh, right, right. They just want God to hear them, basically. Right. And, you know, you don't have perfect singers out there. I'm not a perfect singer, but I'm going to go for broken worship. Right. And um, that's a worshiper. It's just you're going to let er all of you, right. all of you go. And you're going to give all of you to God. But then you have those ones that are singers. Right. They know they can sing, and mm -hmm. they can sing the house down. But did I feel anything? Mm. That's good. I felt your rift. I yeah. felt your run. I felt the music. The, mm -hmm. Oh, they can play. Mm -hmm. But did I feel God? That's good. Did I feel the presence of God? Did I feel his Holy Spirit? Do I feel changed? That's did good. Did I feel a move? Because a lot of times we go places, you don't feel nothing. Right. I'm like, man, that was a, a good thing, good concert, good gathering, good church service. Oh, the guy can preach, but I didn't feel no anointing. <laughs> got good words <laughs> good notes but I didn't feel nothing right you know and a worship leader you know they're gonna worship until the presence of the Lord comes in the house right they're gonna do whatever they have to do for the presence of the Lord to come out and they don't to come out to come in and they don't care if they have to bow out I mean if they have to bow out you know if the presence of the Lord comes they're like okay God you got this I'm gonna bow out and worship Mm -hmm. A singer uh, just sing and keep on singing and keep on singing and keep on singing because mm -hmm. you're going to hear me sing today. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm saying it right, but, no, but it's yeah, just, you, you know, you're yeah. going to hear me sing today. Right. Instead of truly acknowledging the presence of the Lord, yes, he'll, he'll come in, but you want to keep singing what you want to sing. Right. But the worshiper is like, Lord, where do you want me to go from here? Right. You know, we already did this. Where do you want me to go now? Right. You know, but a singer will just sing. And yeah. Sing what they want to sing, <laughs> sound the way they want to sound, 
that's, and yeah. That's really good, though. That's and just the best way I can explain it, but... The, it, it was more than <laughs> adequate. <laughs> it was really powerful. Um, so for you, let's just go back a little bit. At mm -hmm. what point did you realize that this was one of your primary gifts? Mm. I guess as a, a kid. Yeah? Yeah. Um, in was it elementary school... I got up to sing a CC whining song okay. at a talent show. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the kids were so touched. Like, really? oh my God. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe my voice can do a little something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um I didn't really, really get into singing until I was maybe mm, 15, 16. Okay. And then um then I started singing in a group called Expressions, and I was okay. with Chris White back in the day. Some people may know Expressions. Okay. But, okay. Um, and then that's when then I knew. I was like, okay, I can sing a little bit. Yeah. But I love to worship. God. So have you always been, or you've always been a worshiper? Always. Or, always? Always. Wow. Always. Even when I was doing my mess. Yeah? In church. Yeah. I knew then. <laughs> I knew then. I knew then. So now, what steps do you take to protect and to develop your gift? Hmm. Well, I have a vocal trainer for one that helps me. Right. Uh, J. Pierre, he's a great vocal trainer. Um, also, like I said before, you can't do, you can't go everywhere. You right. can't do everything. And you definitely have to surround yourself with prayer warriors because you need all the prayer you can get. Right. And, um, that's how I protected. My husband is very protective. Uh, I mean, sometimes too protective. He's probably laughing at me now. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I remember one time he told me when I was pregnant with our um, son, Calum, he's like, I have to protect you because, you know, things can attach to you. Wow. And it's true. I remember right. one person in church touched me, and I didn't understand why all of a sudden I started feeling sick. Wow. I got pulled up to my mom's house and just started throwing up all Man. this white stuff. But I wasn't sick before. And so to protect myself, I'm constantly praying over me and my family, mm -hmm. constantly anointing ourselves before we go places, because people want to attach to what God has given you, but not necessarily be for you. Mm. That's good. So and I'm not saying I'm perfect, but what he has given me, that's how I protect myself. And, but that's really good, though, because I think a lot of times we don't think about protecting what God has given us. Mm -mm. You know, there's there's sometimes a cavalier attitude that is like, oh, well, it's grace and oh, well, I can do and oh, well. And we don't think about, no, 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 no. God gave me a gift. And the way that I show my appreciation for what God has given me is that I'm going to protect it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or and and not only am I going to protect it, I'm also going to invest in it yes. to make sure that. When I come back to him, I can be like the person who was given the talents and say, God, this is how I developed what you gave me. And, and that's why you always have to keep God first. Mm -hmm. I don't care in what situation, I don't care what area of life, you have to keep him first. Because you're protecting the anointing, you're protecting the gift that he's given you by keeping your focus on him. Right. He's the one that keeps us every single day. Right. When we go in different places and areas, he's the one that protects us and keeps us. He's the one that tells you, no, don't go that way. No, mm -hmm. don't don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. You need to stay over here. He's the one that's actually protecting you. And if you step out of the realm of God, how is he going to talk to you? Because you're not listening. You're out of the realm. Right. So he's the one that's actually protecting you. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's. Um, I think one of the things that it also shows, you know, there's different schools of thought, right? Mm -hmm. Some people think, oh, you can't protect the anointing, blah, 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 that's the power of God, da, da, da. I, and to each his own. Me personally, I, I believe that if, you know, if, if um, my mom gives me a diamond bracelet, mm -hmm. and I know that she worked really hard to give me that diamond bracelet, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna treat it like it's common. Exactly. Because someone who loved me gave to made you. a sacrifice yes. and gave me something of value. Mm -hmm. And my appreciation for the thing of value is I'm now going to protect that. 
to the best of my ability. I may fail, mm -hmm. but I'm going to die trying. Right. Right. And that's God. I mean, he gave his life for us. And like I said, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Right, right, right. But growing up now and going through the things that I've been through, it's like, Lord, you did all this for me. Right. I'm going to protect my temple as right. best as I can in this fleshly body. Right. And like I said, we are not perfect, right. but we strive for perfection. Mm -hmm. And he says our body is his temple. Right. So how do you protect what he's done for you? How do you protect this temple? Right. How do you keep this temple clean? How do you keep this temple able to go before the throne of grace right. every day? How do you protect this temple to be able to reach the presence of God every day? You can't reach the presence of God and you're doing Timbuktu or doing whatever you want to do. Right. I mean, you're going to have to go back and repent and, <laughs> and you know, do all this stuff to get back to that place. And right. who's to say he's going to allow you to get back? Girl, to that place, right? So you you gotta protect yourself, and I mean you gotta constantly keep consecrating. And, and you know it kind of burns me up when people be like, "Oh, you so holy," or "You more holier than thou." And I'm like, "Really?" But we're supposed to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. That's what the word says. Right. And I don't think people are being so holy. I think they're just trying to keep themselves. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know the testimony they have and why they are the way that they are. Right. Why they carry their Bible. Why they're always thanking God everywhere they go. Why they're always in the grocery store. Hallelujah, thank you. You don't know why they do that. Right. And that's why I don't like when people say, oh, you're so holy. You're, 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 you're too holy, you no good. What? Yeah. If, if they want to be holy 24-7, let them be holy. Maybe that's what's going to keep them from going back to where they used to be. Right. You know, you never know what people have been through, their testimony, what they used to do and why, they're, are, why they are the way that they are, to keep themselves in communion with God. Right. So. And then, and then it, it goes back to what you were saying. It, it, it goes back to that where your treasure is, where you, Jesus said it best, where your heart is. Mm -hmm. No, where your heart, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. And so if my treasure is the life that's to come, if my treasure is to hear well done, if my treasure is to be pleasing to him, then no matter how many times I stumble, no matter how many times I fall, no matter how many times his light shines on me and shows me, you all fix this, <laughs> his word cuts me, you all, mm -hmm. that's what I'm striving for. That's what you're striving that's what, for. And so, um, unfortunately, sometimes that whole too holy stuff mm -hmm. has less to do with the person and more to do with the concentration of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it's like a lamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I've been through some some serious things in my life and I strive to try to stay as holy as I can because right. I don't want to go back right to those places. Right. So And it yeah, it that's so good because when you um I you know, I think about in my college days, there there were some <laughs> bad financial choices that I mean <laughs> that I'm like I think we've all made those yeah <laughs> and it's like I will not ever <laughs> do that again <laughs> right, and right. so we just take that same concept and we now translate it over into the spirit mm -hmm. and it's I don't ever want to go back to that place yeah, I don't ever so, want to go back yeah and so for that reason I con I consistently press all right, you guys, we are going to have to take a break in just a moment for station identification. We are here with Shantae. When we come back, we're going to talk about her project, He Lives. And we're also going to talk about the Come Let Us Worship experience <laughs> to find out what she did with that. So hang tight. We'll be back in just a moment.
All right, we are back here in studio with Shantae Brown, her uh, new album that's just been released called He Lives. Um, she has been, oh my God, the Lord's used her to just kind of take us all the way out into the deep end. I thought Thank maybe we were going to gradually get there. <laughs> no, we just jumped right on Thank in. <laughs> um, so what life lessons have you learned from your time as a background singer? What lessons did you learn that you can kind of go, oh, that's a good life lesson? Um. Life lesson? Mm -hmm. Being a background singer? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I don't know, Simone. Yeah. Life lessons? Yeah. You know, like, if you're singing in the background, mm -hmm. making sure you stay on your note. Oh, okay. Yeah. You said life lessons. I'm thinking, like, what did I learn in life? I'm singing background. I don't know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, that uh, know who you're singing with. Okay. For one, um, make sure that uh, you listening to the singers you're singing with. Right. You never want to be uh, alone. Right. Singing alone as a background singer. You're <laughs> you're a background singer with other singers. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, make sure you are blending. You know, uh, and. Uh, Make sure that, you know, one life lesson I've learned as a background singer, you can't do what everybody else do. That's so good. I mean, it just goes back to what we were talking about, you know. There may be some background singers that do a certain thing, but you may not be able to do that. Right. And remember still that your body is a temple. Right. And um, other people may not treat their body the same way, mm -hmm. but they sing background with you. Mm. So you just can't, um, and I'm not saying that's anybody. No, 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 no. Right, right, I'm right, just right. saying in general, you know, you still have to make sure that you maintain your lifestyle. Right. Um, and keeping it clean and holy. That's good. As best as you can. Yeah. You know, like I said, we're in this fleshly body and we're not perfect. And right. we're still learning. And you can't be judgmental. Right. You can't be judgmental by what you see or what you hear. You know, and also to pray for each other. When you right. sing background, I've learned to pray in that um, sometimes most background singers, if you've been singing with them for a long time, you end up becoming their family. Yeah. And so what would you do for your family? Right. You know, you pray for them and uh, you support them in whatever they do, you right. know. That's what I've learned as a background singer. Those are really good lessons. Yeah. Those are really good life And shout out to Chris White. You know, hey, Chris <laughs> so White. with expressions hey. for so long, I learned they became my family and they still my family. Yeah. And uh, I've learned so much. I was the youngest singer in that group. Right. And um, everybody else, well, when we first started, I think it was like three of us was single. Two of us were single. Everybody else was married. Yeah. And then it ended up being me and <laughs> me being the youngest. And um, they were protective, and I appreciated them for that. And I learned um, that everything is not always going to be perfect. Everything's right. not going to always go right. And um, But you support. You become a family. You support your family. Uh, you learn from your family. Right. And um, I learned a lot of singing lessons, being in expressions. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so... That sounds really good. <laughs> it does. So let's segue a little bit because you okay. were talking about how you were single when you were in expressions. I and, was. And now you're married. I'm married now. And so your husband's a musician. Mm -hmm. How do you guys work to support and to challenge one another to excel? What do you do? Um, we just, you know, have each other's back. Right. You know, and uh, we balance life as, you know, during the week. I may have the kids because he may have to go play somewhere. And then during the weekends, I'm with him, you know, when he has to go play, if I can. Right. You know, we thank God for our mothers because <laughs> <laughs> and our aunts that, you know, will watch the kids. Shout out so to that the... we can To the aunties and the mamas. <laughs> we love you, Mama Brown, Mama Williams, Auntie Kelly. We love you. Um, uh, they would um, make sure that our boards are taken care of so that I can go support him right. when we travel. Uh, and uh, we just try to just, you know, hey, can you take care of this? And I'll take care of that. You got the boys tonight? Okay, I got dinner tonight. You know, right. you got homework? Okay, I got the clothes. Let me go take care of the clothes, washing the clothes. We just kind of balance it out that way. I love that. Yeah, it he, sounds like you guys are a team. And he like, always says, you're not alone. I'm like, okay, babe. <laughs> <laughs> so we just kind of work.
work it out that way. You know? I like that. Yeah. So can we expect to um, see a musical collaboration from the two of you uh, in the future? People always ask that. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe one day. Okay. <laughs> well, if you do, just, you know, the title of the CD. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Should okay. I say it now or should we wait? You want to wait. You want to we'll wait. wait? Yeah, you okay. wait. But just know that if it happens... <laughs> The title of the CD was... It came from Simone. It, it came, came from Simone. From Simone. The Simone Edwards show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, let's talk about your new project, He Lives. Oh, yeah. Definitely a God thing. Um, I had the worship experience, and um, it was something Lord gave me three years ago. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, I don't know, some people may have seen it on Facebook, the kind of, like, testimony on there. But I had kept telling the Lord no because I didn't sing like this person. I didn't sound like this person. I wasn't a worship leader, per se, like some people. Um, but I was like, Lord, mm, I, don't, I don't know about that one. And uh, he wouldn't let me sleep. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, literally, I'm not exaggerating. Every night wow. I could not sleep. And um, until I said yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said yes. And then I was like, okay, so how are we going to do this? Or how are you going to do this? Right. <laughs> Since you gave it to me, you make sure everything is in place. And so he started leading me to different people. And hats off to uh, Grace Pro Services, uh, Tanisha uh, Patel and Cam Patel. Um, I told her what the Lord had gave me. And she was like, oh, let me pray on it. Right. And it couldn't even be a day later. She was like, yes, we got this. And me thinking it was going to be something like a worship service. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the pastor had me one day do like a prayer worship service. And mm -hmm. I had got a couple of um, singers. And um, I told them we were just going to sing worship songs. Mm -hmm. And they're going to pray. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back with some more worship songs. And um, that was a beautiful night as well. And then... Uh, with the worship experience, I'm thinking, oh, maybe it'll be something like that. Mm -hmm. But what he had shown me was people were coming to somewhat of a musical, but they were coming to the altar. They were, their hearts were broken, but they were getting mended. They were being restored. Mm -hmm. um, they were being healed physically, spiritually. Meant it was just they were. It was a whole bunch of things that was going to happen. And I just said, okay. I said, all right, okay, Lord, if if that's what you want, okay, well now show me who you want me to use. And um, some people, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he gave me some people first. And I said, okay. So I went to them and, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, um, let me get back to you. And, you know, all these kind of things. So I just said, okay. So I just kept like, okay, Lord, now you want this to happen. When do you want this to happen? How do you want this to happen? He gave me the date. Wow. He gave me the time. And then um, certain people that didn't want to be a part of it, he just stepped in and gave me other people. Wow. And I ended up meeting uh, a musician that came here from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. oh, such a worshiper. Wow. An instrumentalist. And um, God just took it from there. Then the singers came, and it was just a beautiful thing. And the whole experience of the project came from I just wanted the people to have something to leave the experience with. Right. You know, it didn't have to be a full album. I just wanted them to have one or two, three songs that they can go home, put in their car, and just go home and worship and praise God to but I wanted them to feel God mm -hmm. when they put it in their CD oh, player. Wow. I just didn't want them to have it. I was like, Lord, let them feel you. Yeah. Let them acknowledge you. Let it, let it uh, send them into your holy presence. That was all I wanted. Right. And um, that's how he lived came. That's, <laughs> it's beautiful. That's it, how it really came about. is. Yeah. And so because of the structure of this show and because mm -hmm. we deal with empowering women empowering our audience but this show is specifically the third week is specifically for women because sometimes I think women more so than men and this may be a gross generalization so please forgive me I think sometimes women more than men kind of get stuck behind their excuses get stuck behind um, and excuses may sound harsh but get stuck behind circumstances and situations and doubts and fears and all that stuff to move forward and the whole purpose of this is is to empower women to move forward in whatever it is that God has called them to do. Even if you're taking baby steps, you're moving forward versus standing still. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about how you dealt with moments of frustration or doubt or the obstacles that came up and kind of how God helped you to push through that. And all those came up. 
Okay. All of those things came up. <laughs> All of them? All of those things came up uh, with the project. Because like I said, it was, I was more focused on the experience, but I still wanted them to have something mm-hmm. to leave with. And obstacles came. Like I started in one way, and that just fell through. But then God was like, just keep focused on me. Right. And that's what I did. I kept consecrating and trying to listen to him in the midst of the situations. I mean, because there were situations that hit hard to the heart. Wow. I mean, like, to the point, like, maybe maybe I shouldn't have this, God, but you told me to have it. So how are you going to rectify this situation? How are you going to fix this? Right. Because I don't see how it's going to how it's going to happen. Right. And um, then he just started putting more people in place where they just was like, oh, we got this. You're going to do this. Right. You're going to get through this. And I had to overcome the fear of myself. That's good. That's really good. And a lot of times, men and women, we don't go forward in things that God has given us because of fear. Right. Whether it's, um, I don't want to say this, uh, just insecurities. Right. You know, um, not good enough. Right. Not pretty enough, not handsome enough. Who's going to hear me? Who's going to watch me? Right. Who wants to listen to me? Right. You know, my voice is not this. And for me, it was like, my voice is not any of these people i said but lord i'm a worshiper and i know that's what you told me because i worship right so you know you just have to keep focus on him even through the tears and the pain and the hurt that's good and you can have some hurt and i had some hurt (laughs) but he brought me through yeah and i had support team which was a blessing some people don't have a support team but just remember as long as god is number one girl give me some it will happen right because if he said and he told you to do it, right. it will come to pass. Excellent. All right, we need to take a break for station identification. We will be back in studio with recording artist Shantae Brown discussing her new album, He Lives. We'll be back in just a moment. Bye. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns about today's show? Would you like to share your testimony or any constructive critiques? Would you like to know how to be a guest on The Simone Edwards Show? Please feel free to email us at thesimoneedwardsshow at gmail.com. We are also available on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Be sure to follow us to receive updates regarding the show and our other ministries. All right, we are back here in studio. I have some awesome help going on over in the corner. (laughs) Um, We are back here in studio with Shantae Brown, recording artist of He Lives, and her two um, amazing sons are here. We were discussing them on the break. Incredibly talented and a musical family at that. Yes, we are. (laughs) Awesome. So let's talk about um, your worship album, He Lives. What's your favorite song on this album and Um, why? I like them both. Yeah? Yeah, I have a lot of people that... Uh, well, Elvert Trevlay from Mandates, he was mm-hmm. the one that uh, produced it along with Corey Parrish. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love you, Trevlay. You know, he's a pusher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is a pusher. And um, both the songs, I love them. Yeah. You know, um, they were both hard for me because I'm used to singing background in the studio, but right. not but not leading songs in the studio. So it was like, what note is that? Wait a minute, what key was that? What did we hit? Let's go back. You know, it was was a little different. And um, (laughs) so both songs, I love both songs. And it's funny because we thought a lot of people would love number one. But it's funny, it's been 50-50. You know, it's only two songs on the CD. And it's been 50-50. Like, people love I Know He Lives. Mm -hmm. And then... The other people are like, oh, no, I like the worship. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it's just both, you know. Okay. So God gave me both songs, and um, I just like them both. I don't really have a favorite one Okay. on there. What all. do you want people to take away from this project? Um, just to know that he died for them. Yeah. That he is real. Yeah. And um, just acknowledge who he is. Yeah. You know, um, it's funny. I had a conversation at work. I have some uh, prayer warriors at work with me. Love you guys. <laughs> um, and uh, we had a discussion the other day. How do you pray? Right. And one person said, you know, 
I just, you know, I start praising and thanking God, and mm-hmm. then I go into tongues, and mm-hmm. another person was like, I acknowledge who he is. Mm-hmm. And once you start acknowledging who he is, then he just comes right on into the prayer. Mm-hmm. And that stuck, that stuck with me. Yeah. And um, I just... I just want people to know or people to acknowledge who he is in their life. Yeah. And that he is there. Yeah. And uh, all you got to do is call on him and, and worship him and he's there. And I'm not saying your life will be perfect and he will fix everything right away. Mm-hmm. But know that he is there with you. Right. Through the hard times, through the good times, he is there. And if you keep him first and that you acknowledge who he is. Mm-hmm it might get a little easier for you to go through that test and that trial. Right. Knowing that he is there. Right. And it may not be fixed right away, Mm -hmm. but know that he loves you. Right. And that he has a purpose for you. Mm -hmm. And I just want them to feel him when they hear those those two songs to to feel him. That's that's the only thing. That's beautiful. (laughs) That's I, I pray that God gives you the desire of your heart. Oh my gosh, Simone. I mean honestly I've been hearing so many things. Yeah. From the experience, you know, um uh people have been inboxing me and calling or texting me and they're like, From the experience I now have a deeper relationship with God. Right. From the experience my prayer life has grown, you know, 'cause in the morning time before that night we had a prayer uh uh, prayer with worship intercession with Evangelist Ruff. And people came out and they just cried out and they prayed. Mm-hmm. Even the musicians came and they prayed. And um, even from that, you know, people were just like, I have a deeper prayer life with God. I know what my purpose is now. Wow. Um, one family inboxed me and said, the mom and the sister wasn't even talking. They hadn't talked in years. Mm-hmm. But that mom and them came to the experience. Now they all have a relationship. Wow. And even I had some people that have never really been in church. Mm -hmm. And they went to, like, Presbyterian churches, Catholic churches. And when they came to the experience, they were like, what was this energy? What is this energy I feel? And I'm like, that's the presence of God. They was like, oh, my gosh, it's so overwhelming. And they just was shaking and crying. They were like, I want more of that. But from that, they've been inboxing me saying, I've never been the same. Right. I feel a closeness now with God. That's beautiful. And that's just, I, I thank him for the testimonies that right. have been coming in. Because what he showed me, sometimes God will show you something, and, and then when you do it, you're like, Lord, was you pleased? Was it, was it, was it really what you right, wanted? Right, right, right. You know? But from the testimonies and the inboxes, I'm like, God, all glory goes to you. Yeah. Because you did what you said, and then some. Right. And even with the project, you know, my prayer was, Lord, let them acknowledge you. Let them feel you. Let them just feel your presence. You know, let it give them some joy. Somebody may be going through and, you know, it touched me. Somebody was really going through hard and they were like, I'm just worshiping right now with Shantae Brown CD. And I mean, they were going through. Right. And I was just like, God, Lord, you know, that's what I want. Yeah. You know, I wanted to help somebody get through whatever it is that they're going through. And I've been just getting testimonies from that, too. I love to worship, but he is great. And the other one is, oh, it just brings me joy to listen to he lives because I know he lives. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I want. And if he sees fit for an album to come out of that, then I want the same thing. Right. Because it's him right. that I want to give the glory to it. nobody else. And so it's been crazy because it's been more than what I expected. Right. Like I said, um, the song has been traveling and, I got to get it on, what is it, CD Baby and Spotify and all that now because people are like, I need the CD, I need the songs. That's and the technology cool. nowadays is like, okay, yeah. I need you to get it on there so I can download, <laughs> download it on my phone. So I'm just, I give all glory to God. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. Yeah. And oh, by the way, when I was doing the project, I didn't realize I had put all the money towards experience. Right. God was blessing people to write checks for the project to come out. Wow. I mean, just putting it in my hand. See? So I'm telling you, when God tells you to do something, believe, I'm trust and believe, just just go with him. Yeah. And trust and believe everything will happen and it will come to pass because he will make provisions. He, I'm a living witness. And I'm telling you, he yeah. did. And he's still doing it. Right. Yeah. The, okay, so talk to us about the Come Let Us Worship experience. You're the founder of it. Mm-hmm. So what is Come Let Us Worship? What is what is the Come Let Us Worship experience? Just what it is. 
Yeah. It just what it was that night. Just come and worship with us and and touch the throne of God. That's yeah. what it was. And um, people are asking now for another one. Oh, that's um, good. Because they felt like it was come let us worship. Right. Like it wasn't just people up singing. They mm. felt God in it. Right. And I mean, I had one person said I almost couldn't, I couldn't work because of the musicians playing. They were just. The spirit of the Lord was all over them. I felt God. And I'm like, that's what Come Let Us Worship is about. Right. And that's what it was about. And God just, he definitely reigned in the place oh, that wow. evening. So um, that's what it's about. Just come worship with us. That is Let awesome. Let us all come and worship. So if you were to give, we're kind of heading towards the top of the hour. Okay. If you were to give any advice mm -hmm. to worship leaders, mm -hmm. to those who are looking to produce a project, what advice would you give to them? Listen to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. um, there were songs that I had that, um, that I had woke up with, and I was like, okay, I'll do this song, do that song. But it was funny because I went into the studio uh, with Trev Lay, and Right before I went to the studio, an hour before, he gave me He Is Great. Mm. But that wasn't the song that we was going into the studio to do. Wow. Actually, the song that we went into the studio to do is not even on the project. Really? So That's I tell, I, my advice to people is listen to the voice of God. Right. And make sure every word, every sound is truly him and not you. Right. And um, I believe that's how the people will be moved and blessed if you're giving them what God has given you. Yeah, and that's the key, mm -hmm. is we're trying to store up treasure in heaven, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. it's about doing what God wants. What God wants. And, and what he knows his people need to hear. Mm -hmm. What the people, whoever will come across. Right. That's beautiful, yeah. absolutely love that. What has the, what has the last um, five years taught you? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have time? Ooh, marriage, kids, uh, <laughs> work. Uh, well, to be faithful to him. Yeah. He'll never fail you. Um, like I said, even through hardships mm -hmm. and broken hearts and, you know, just be faithful to God. Right. Um, it's not always easy. You get frustrated and you, I just want to go do this because I'm tired. I'm sick of this, you know. But, right. You know, he always says, be angry and sin not. So <laughs> be angry and sin not. Right. You know, that's that's number one. Right. I've learned, don't bid evil for evil. Mm -hmm. You know, only God can get that person right. the way he wants to get them. So right. if somebody's done you wrong, to pray for them. Yep. We're supposed to pray for our enemies. So yep. you pray for them. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we have to look at, of course, I'm going to say sometimes we need to always realize that it's not the person. It's mm -hmm. the spirit that's in them. So right. you have to pray for them. And number three, don't be judgmental. Right. You never know where a person has been or where right. they're at. Right. Don't be judgmental. And what I'm also learning this last lesson now is you can't judge somebody else's worship and praise. That, oh, that's so, mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't know how they worship and praise. Right. You know how you worship and praise, but right. you can't judge them. You can't say that uh, they're not worshiping right. They're right. not praising right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -mm. You can't say that. So I'm learning that now. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Okay, last question. Where would you like, what would you like your life to look like in five years? Still married. Mm -hmm. My boy is doing well and healthy. Uh, just have grown <laughs> and got more. I've learned more um, to get my degree. Okay. I'm halfway there. All right, congratulations. Yeah, I'm halfway there to getting my BA. And uh, that's about it for right now. That sounds good. I don't know where this music is going. But um, if God sees fit for it to go further, mm -hmm. uh, then amen, as long as he's directing me. Right. That's my main thing. As long as he's directing me. I love it. I'll be fine. <laughs> Absolutely love it. All right. So um, is it available for digital download yet? Or Not it will yet. Be? We're actually working on that now. So okay. uh, as soon as it is, I will let make sure everybody knows. We'll put it out there that it's ready for download on digital. Awesome. So if you're in the San Diego area, where can they go to get this? They can come to Total Deliverance Worship Center and get it. Mm -hmm. If you see me, I always have it in my car. Awesome. 
<laughs> so if you see her, you can get it, you or get you it. can go to Total Deliverance Worship Center to pick this up. Um, also, as we are accustomed to do here on the show, um, we want to thank you so much for tuning in for the past hour with us on the Simone Edwards Show. We hope you've enjoyed our interview with Shantae Brown. But above all else, ladies, we hope that you feel empowered and encouraged to go forth and to do whatever it is that God has called you to do and to press through the doubts, the insecurities, the obstacles that present themselves and to know that if God told you to do something, that he is going to see it through in your life to completion. If you like what you've heard and you would like to um, come to where I go to church, we want to invite you to Perfecting Grace. It is located um, 3142 East Plaza Boulevard in National City, California. You can find us on the web at www.perfectinggrace.net. If you would like to fellowship or go check out and see where Shantae worships, where can they find you? Come on, Total Deliverance Worship Center. Excellent. Where bishop is Bishop William A. Benson. <laughs> awesome. And they're here in the city of San Diego, so just be sure to Google that. We will not be in studio next week. We're going to have a pre recorded show, but we'll be back the first week of October. We have a great lineup for you in October. We've got. Um, We've got some amazing, uh, an amazing young person coming on. We're going to continue our love and relationship series. We've got another girl. Can we talk coming in? Um, we've got a great community liaison coming through, and we also have our pastors corner that's coming up in October. So we've got a busy schedule for, uh, and uh, um, not just busy, but productive, 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 mm -hmm. and impactful schedule for the month of October. Have a great rest of your Saturday, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. And cut. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs>